Hello, I'm Matt Asher with statisticsblog.com. This video is about my attempt to simulate a landmine clearing device built by Masad Hassani called the Mine Kafan. I've put a link to his webpage at statisticsblog.com. I highly recommend checking out his video. Hassani's device looks like this. It's a cheap, easy to build mind clearer that travels under the power of the wind. When I first saw the video, I was awestruck by what Hassani had done. It seemed like an incredible achievement, clever, creative, a fantastic idea for making the world better, a device that used the power of nature to clean up after man. The more I thought about it, though, the more I wondered what might happen if hundreds of kafans were sent out into a minefield. So to examine that question, I built a simulation. I'm going to run it right now. I've slowed it down so that you can see what's happening. Each blue line represents the path a kafan might take across the minefield. The red circles represent exploded mines. The gray parts are places where paths have overlapped. Based on Hassani's video, I've assumed there's a prevailing wind that sweeps the devices right out into the field, and that the kafans are released at equally spaced intervals at the edge of the minefield. Uh, the movements up and down represent turbulence, uneven ground, or the natural tendency of the kafans themselves to move with a wobble. I've posted the code to the simulation on my website, as I do for all my blog posts. It's written in R, a free and open source programming language. You can go into my code and easily change the wind speed and other parameters, then rerun the simulation. For example, I've set the number of mines that each kafan can absorb before it stops working to four. That's based on what Hassani estimates, but you can change that up or down. Uh, you can see right here a kafan that has stopped after it's plated out and hit five, uh, four mines and can no longer continue along. Uh, just looking at the simulation in this way, it seems to be working fairly well. Most of the kafans are finding landmines, and a lot of the landmines are getting cleared. The biggest problem I see with Hassani's approach has to do with efficiency, especially as you try to get more and more of the mines detected. Uh, the more kafans you send into the field, the more overlapping you get, and the lower your efficiency becomes, and the harder it gets to detect the remaining mines. Uh, I ran the simulation with different numbers of kafans, always spaced at equal intervals, to give them the best chance to clear as many mines as possible. You can see here the percentage of unexploded mines still left versus the number of kafans that were released into the minefield. Each point on the graph represents a new simulation with that many kafans. So here, for example, in the simulation with 500 kafans released, about 38% of the mines were still remaining. Uh, as you can see, at first adding more kafans gives you almost a linear decrease in the percentage of mines left, but the closer you get to clearing all the mines, the more elusive that goal becomes. Even after 2,000 kafans have been released, uh, which if they had been moving perfectly straight, would have covered the area of our simulation four times over, uh, there's still some mines that are left unexploded. Uh, if you look at my blog, you'll see a post I did about something I call the unicorn problem, related to finding all of the new species in an environment. The problem there, as with this approach, is that the marginal rate of detection goes down as the number of attempts goes up. Uh, what's happening is the more kafans you use, the more you overlap territory. Uh, here's a graph showing the amount of territory that's been traversed more than once by a kafan. Uh, the overall result is that the cost of the landmines is going to the cost of uh, the cost per destroyed mine is going to continue rising as you want to get closer and closer to taking out all of the mines in the territory. Uh, the, the, he estimated a cost uh, per kafan of forty dollars or uh, forty euros rather about fifty dollars and uh, because each one can be used to destroy more than one mine if you're just sending a few kafans into the minefield then you end up with say a twenty dollar per mine destroyed cost but then that continues to increase and increase uh, as you go along 
I wish Hassani the best of luck with his project. Uh, hopefully these issues can be addressed, whatever falls with his approach. This is a very important thing that he's doing. I noticed in a more recent video he mentioned tracking the Kafan's motion with GPS. I don't know whether his initial price estimate included the cost of GPS. At any rate, uh, this would help keep track of the areas which had been covered and which hadn't but unless he's using a GPS accurate to within a foot, I wouldn't want to try and walk in the exact path cleared by the device. In my simulation, I'm assuming that every single time a Kafan is in the area of a mine, it explodes that mine. It's not clear that this would be the case, though it would be easy enough to add a, a probability of failure to the simulation. Uh, there are adjustments you can make to the simulation and its parameters that'll result in more of the Kafans being effective though any design that relies on wind patterns is going to suffer from the same diminishing returns in the unicorn problem even if the wind is, is widely turbulent and uh, increases the probability that all of the plates will be used uh, you still have the problem of overlap and perhaps an even worse uh, performance if the kafans get stuck in one area or are quickly blown out of the minefield by wind that is highly erratic uh, there, overall, there's lots of reasons not to want to walk out onto the minefield, no matter how many of the Kafans have been through it. Uh, even if mine Kafans uh, is not the best option for clearing an entire region of mines, they might still be an effective way to test for the presence of mines in an area, to do a sampling in that area and see how likely it is to contain landmines, and if so, how many mines and what regions might have higher concentrations of mines than others.